Hold on. The only black guy here, man. We got the light on. We call, this, we call this light, man. We good. We good. It just we shows off your smile a little bit more. The light. Dad, I just wanted to clarify. What did you mean by he likes it more in his ass? <laughs> I just heard that's the way them um, Bulgarian boys get down, you know, old ancient shit. Mm. Uh, moving on from that, what exactly did you think about your performance? It was very sort of composed and you know, it looks like you've grown a lot. What did you think of your performance? Yeah, I wanted to um, pace myself and not gas out, because even though um, his movement and everything was, um, it's really, I couldn't have really capitalized more than what I did, the way he, he moved and the way he stands and stuff like that. But I just really just wanted to be patient because um, we know we knew that he was like really a counter striker, and so he try to throw um, his right hook a lot whenever you come in. So I was just try to be cautious with that. I'm sure there's not many guys who hit that hard and that often that have been able to stand there and take punishment. At some point, do you think is that why you have to take your foot off the gas a little bit just to conserve your energy so you didn't just keep waving away? Yeah, for sure, Mister. I was real surprised that. Um, he took that much damage and didn't go out and at least a little wobbly or something more than what he was. And so I was just like surprised, like, damn, okay, um, so what else can I do? And so that's whenever I was trying to go for the booty hole. The last time in MLB, obviously, didn't go your way. How, <laughs> uh, last time in MSG, you obviously didn't go your way. How did you feel about that? How did it feel to get your hand ready to tonight? Um, really, it was like I didn't, it didn't feel like I was saying MSG. Like I've been saying all week, it just it feels like a, a normal stadium. It's the way the UFC set up each event. It's like all of them the same, really. And you mentioned Trump in your post-fight uh, mm -hmm. interview. What did you think about him being caged like that? Um, it was pretty cool, though. You know, I wish Obama would have did that, but, you know, it is what it is. But I think it was pretty cool. Derek, uh, after the fight, Curtis Blades, who was sitting cage side, called you out. He said he wants to fight you and he'd make you Half to take downs. What do you think of that matchup? I know you guys have kind of circled each other and been close in the rankings for a while now. No, that's fine. It'd be a good fight, um, Curtis Blades. You know, shit. He take me down. I'm gonna rest, get all the rest I can, then I'm gonna get up and I'm knock his ass out. Well, I'm gonna try to knock him out, but I don't think he's tough enough, like um, that booty hole dude. I just fought. Couple here, Derek. First, um, you know, you got you got nutritionist for the first time mm -hmm. for going to this camp. I noticed that you know you always your power maintains all the way through the fight, but you didn't seem as labored at the end of the third round. Uh, did it work for you, and is that something you're going to use moving forward? Um, for sure. Um, like all training camp, well, at least the last three weeks, um, my heart rate was like like 52 below, sometimes below 50, and even when it, like between rounds that we just focus on. Um, just catch my breath and relax and really don't let the moment overwhelm me. You know? And uh, in complete contrast to that, I know the hype's died down a little bit, but uh, is that Popeye chicken sandwich as good as people say it is? It is, you know. Um, shit. What today? What time is it right now? 11.30. Yeah, we got a couple more hours. And um, tomorrow they supposed to be bringing the sandwich back. So uh, we're going to have to make this quick because so, I got a flight to catch. So um, I need her to wrap this up. How much danger were you in when he was making the submission attempt on your arm? Oh, not at all. My um, training partner, Larry Crow, that he gets me in there all the time. That's whenever I, I like it the most. And I try to like make it seem like I'm not going to fight it that much. So he want to turn around and try to elbow me, make him think that he almost got it. So the whole time, I'm just like, just relax, relax. Okay, all right. Then get him off me. Yeah. The fight went to a split decision. Were you at all worried? You know, when you heard the. Of course, I was worried. I was like, damn, how many times did he take me down? How many times did he hit me? And so I was. I told my coach, I didn't think it was really a split decision. I thought that, um, Blagor, that Blagor, Blagor, I thought he had won. So that's what I was kept telling my coach afterwards. You talked about your nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, on media day, you told me about how your cardiovascular working and training was a huge benefit because you weren't training as much. You were only training probably once a day. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you found the perfect formula in training? Yeah, for sure. Um, we're still not where we want to be, but it's a good start. And dealing with all the craziness that we did, dealing with today with the um, CIA, 
couldn't even bring nothing in really, you know, just a distraction all around. And usually I eat something before I go out there. I couldn't even eat anything. Only time I, I ate once today and it was a salad. And I just picked the meat out of it and threw the other stuff away. I'm serious. And, and whenever I got here, and I couldn't eat nothing. How did uh, Trump coming here affect? Because Kevin Lee mentioned it as like being locked down. How, how, what, what was the difference of coming to a fight and having to go somewhere? Yeah, it was for real. It felt like it was in prison and on lockdown. You know, the whole, ex the whole experience, it felt like you're going to maximum security prison. You got to get patted down and make even... Other grown men, they're telling you you can't move, can't even go to the restroom. And it just felt like he was in prison, really. Did it feel like it was a, might affect uh, your performance? Have I thought for sure that? it was going to affect my performance. You know, usually I like to get a good sweat going. I couldn't really get warmed up before the fight. So it was like really affecting me mentally, really. Derek, is it fair to say you're going to be rooting for Greg Hardy to win on Saturday, even though you don't really seem to like him, just because that could maybe make that fight happen? Oh, not at all. I want Greg Hardy to get his ass up out of UFC and see making everybody else look bad. So we don't need him to win no more fights. Did you think he even has a chance of beating Volko? Obviously, you'd be in there with him. Um, I don't think so. You know, um, shit. They got they got on to him now, so I don't think he's asking bringing hell into the cage to help him this time. So I don't think he will. Hmm. After hearing you talk about the politics up there, are you ready to use this platform here to announce your candidacy? To run um, for like that? you know. Um, and what would you change? Really, I think it, it is time to have a hundred percent black man into the office. So I might run for governor first and see maybe maybe um twenty. 24, maybe I run then because I'm, I'll be eligible age limit. Yeah, so we'll see. What do you mean by 100% black man in office? Um, you know, Obama was a little watered down. He had a little mixed, <laughs> little, little mixed breed into him. So, you know, we needed 100%, you know, ninja up in that thing. You know, so we'll see.